The Greek resistance Greek, ethniki antistase translate. Ethniki antistasi, national resistance, is the blanket term for a number of armed and unarmed groups from across the political spectrum that resisted the Axis occupation of Greece in the period 1941–1944, during World War II. It is considered as one of the strongest resistance movements especially EAM -ELAS in Nazi-occupied Europe. Topic. Origins The rise of resistance movements in Greece was precipitated by the invasion and occupation of Greece by Nazi Germany and its allies Italy and Bulgaria from 1941 to 44. Italy led the way with its attempted invasion from Albania in 1940, which was repelled by the Greek army. After the German invasion, the occupation of Athens and the fall of Crete, King George II and his government escaped to Egypt, where they proclaimed a government in exile, recognized by the Western Allies, but not yet by the Soviet Union, which was temporarily neutral to Nazi Germany after the signature of the Molotov–Ribbentrop Pact. The British actively encouraged, even coerced, the king to appoint centrist, moderate ministers. Only two of his ministers were members of the dictatorial government that had governed Greece before the German invasion. Despite that some in the left-wing resistance claimed the government to be illegitimate, on account of its roots in the dictatorship of Ioannis Metaxas from 1936 to 41. The Germans set up a Greek collaborationist government, headed by General Georgios Solokoglu, before entering Athens. Some high-profile officers of the pre-war Greek regime served the Germans in various posts. This government however, lacked legitimacy and support, being utterly dependent on the German and Italian occupation authorities, and discredited because of its inability to prevent the cession of much of Greek Macedonia and Western Thrace to Bulgaria. Both the collaborationist government and the occupation forces were further undermined due to their failure to prevent the outbreak of the Great Famine, with the mortality rate reaching a peak in the winter of 1941–42, which seriously harmed the Greek civilian population. Topic. First resistance acts Although there is an unconfirmed incident connected with Evzone Konstantinos Kokidis the day the Germans occupied Athens, the first confirmed resistance act in Greece had taken place on the night of 30 May 1941, even before the end of the Battle of Crete. Two young students, Apostolos Santis, a law student, and Manolis Glizos, a student at the Athens University of Economics and Business, secretly climbed the northwest face of the Acropolis and tore down the swastika banner which had been placed there by the occupation authorities. The first wider resistance movements occurred in northern Greece, where the Bulgarians annexed Greek territories. The first mass uprising occurred around the town of Drama in eastern Macedonia, in the Bulgarian occupation zone. The Bulgarian authorities had initiated large-scale Bulgarization policies, causing the Greek population's reaction. During the night of 28–29 September 1941 the people of Drama and its outskirts rose up. This badly organized revolt was suppressed by the Bulgarian army, which retaliated executing over 3,000 people in Drama alone. An estimated 15,000 Greeks were killed by the Bulgarian occupational army during the next few weeks and in the countryside entire villages were machine gunned and looted. The town of Doxato and the village of Koristi are officially considered today martyr cities. At the same time, large demonstrations were organized in Greek Macedonian cities by the Defenders of Northern Greece YVE, a right-wing organization, in protest against the Bulgarian annexation of Greek territories. Armed groups consisted of Andartes Antarts, guerrillas, first appeared in the mountains of Macedonia by October 1941, and the first armed clashes resulted in 488 civilians being murdered in reprisals by the Germans, which succeeded in severely limiting resistance activity for the next few months. However, these harsh actions, together with the plundering of Greece's natural resources by the Germans, turned Greeks more against the occupiers. Topic. Establishment of the first resistance groups The lack of a legitimate government and the inactivity of the established political class created a power vacuum and meant an absence of a rallying point for the Greek people. Most officers and citizens who wanted to continue the fight fled to the British-controlled Middle East, and those who remained behind were unsure of their prospects against the Wehrmacht. 
This situation resulted in the creation of several new groupings, where the pre-war establishment was largely absent, which assumed the role of resisting the occupation powers. The first major resistance group to be founded was the National Liberation Front EAM. EAM was a political movement. By 1944 EAM became a movement with more than 1,800,000 members the Greek population was around 7,500,000 at that time. EAM was organized by the Communist Party of Greece KKE and other smaller parties, but all major political parties refused to participate either in EAM or in any other resistance movement. On February 16, 1942, EAM gave permission to a communist veteran, called Athanasios Thonisus Claris later known as Aris Volusiotis to examine the possibilities of a victorious armed resistance movement. Soon the first Andartes guerrillas joined ELAS and many battles were fought and won against both the Italians and Nazis the sabotage of Gorgopotamo's bridge with the participation of EADS partisans and British commandos of SOE, the battle at Micro Horio, etc. The second to be found was Venizelist oriented National Republican Greek League EADS, led by a former army officer, Colonel Napoleon Zervas, with exiled Republican General Nikolaos Plastiras as its nominal head. Although its foundation was announced in late 1941, there were no military acts until 1942, when the Greek People's Liberation Army ELAS, the Armed Forces of EAM, was born. Resistance in the mountains, Andartico Greece is a mountainous country, with a long tradition in Andartico, Antartico guerrilla warfare, dating back to the days of the clefts anti-Turkish bandits of the Ottoman period, who often enjoyed folk hero status. In the 1940s, the countryside was poor, the road network not very well developed, and state control outside the cities usually exercised by the Greek gendarmerie. But by 1942, due to the weakness of the central government in Athens, the countryside was gradually slipping out of its control, while the resistance groups had acquired a firm and wide-ranging organization, parallel and more effective than that of the official state. <laughs> <laughs> Emergence of the armed resistance In February 1942, EAM, an organization controlled by the local Communist Party formed a military corps, ELAS, that would first operate in the mountains of central Greece, with Aris Volusiotis, a communist activist, as their chief captain. Later, on 28 July 1942, a centrist ex-army officer, Colonel Napoleon Zervas, announced the foundation of the National Groups of Greek Guerrillas EOEA, as EADS military arm, to operate, at first, in the region of Aetolia Akarnania. National and Social Liberation ICA also formed a military corps, named after the famous 542nds Evzone Regiment, under call. Dimitrios Saros, that was mainly localized in the area of Mount Giona. Until the summer of 1942, the occupation authorities had been little troubled by the armed resistance, which was still in its infancy. The Italians in particular, in control of most of the countryside, considered the situation to have been normalized. From that point, however, the resistance gained pace, with EAM, ELAS in particular expanding rapidly. Armed groups attacked and disarmed local gendarmerie stations and isolated Italian outposts, or toured the villages and gave patriotic speeches. The Italians were forced to re-evaluate their assessment, and take such measures such as the deportation of army officers to camps in Italy and Germany, which naturally only encouraged the latter to join the underground en masse by escaping to the mountains. These developments emerged most dramatically as the Greek resistance announced its presence to the world with one of the war's most spectacular sabotage acts, the blowing up of the Gorgopotamos railway bridge, linking northern and southern Greece, on 25 November 1942. This operation was the result of British mediation between ELAS and EADS Operation Harling, carried out by 12 British Special Operations Executive SOE saboteurs and a joint ELAS-EADS force. This was the first and last time that the two major resistance groups would cooperate, due to the rapidly developing rivalry and ideological retrenchment between them. Topic: The establishment of Free Greece. Nevertheless, constant attacks and acts of sabotage followed against the Italians, such as the Battle of Fardicompos, resulting in the capture of several hundred Italian soldiers and significant amounts of equipment. 
By the late spring of 1943, the Italians were forced to withdraw from several areas. The towns of Kardica, Grevena, Tricala, Metsovan and others were liberated by July. The Axis forces and their collaborators remained in control only of the main towns and the connecting roads, with the interior left to the Andartes. This was free Greece, stretching from the Ionian Sea to the Aegean and from the borders of the German zone in Macedonia to Boeotia, a territory of 30,000 square kilometres and 750,000 inhabitants. Italian collapse and German takeover By this time July 1943, the overall strength of the Andartes was around 20–30,000, with most belonging to the ELAS, newly under the command of General Stefano Serafis. Eads was limited in operations to Epirus, and Ica operated in a small area in central Greece. The Italian capitulation in September 1943 provided a windfall for the resistance, as the Italian army in many places simply disintegrated. Most Italian troops were swiftly disarmed and interned by the Germans, but on Cephalonia the Acqui division resisted for about a week ELAS fighters joining them before being forced to surrender and subsequently massacred. In many places significant amounts of weaponry and equipment, as well as men, fell into the hands of the resistance. The most spectacular case was that of the Pinerallo Division and the Lancieri di Aosta Cavalry Regiment, which went completely over to the Emite Andartes. The Germans now took over the Italian zone, and soon proved to be a totally different opponent from the demoralized, war-weary and far less brutal Italians. Already since the early summer of 1943, German troops had been pouring into Greece, fearing an Allied landing there in fact falling victims to a grand-scale Allied strategic deception operation. Operation Barclay. Soon they became involved in wide-ranging counter-guerrilla operations, which they carried out with great ruthlessness, based on their experiences in Yugoslavia. In the course of these operations, mass reprisals were carried out, resulting in war crimes such as at Kameno on August 16, the massacre of Calavrita in December and the massacre of Dostomo in June 1944. At the same time, hundreds of villages were systematically torched and almost one million people left homeless. Topic. Prelude to Civil War, the First Conflicts Despite the signing of an agreement in July 1943 between the three main resistance groups EAM, ELAS, EADS and ICA to cooperate and to subject themselves to the Allied Middle East High Command under General Wilson, the National Bands Agreement, in the political field, the mutual mistrust between EAM and the other groups escalated. EAM ELAS was by now the dominant political and military force in Greece, and Eads and Ica, along with the British and the Greek government in exile, feared that after the inevitable German withdrawal, it would try to dominate the country and establish a Soviet regime. This prospect was not only linked with the increasing distrust shown by many conservative and traditional liberal members of the Greek society towards the communists and EAM, but also with British. The British were opposed to an EAM's after war dominance in Greece due to their political opposition to communism, while on the logic of the spheres of influence they believed that such a development would lead the country, which traditionally considered belongs in their sphere of influence, to that of the Soviet Union. Finally the conflict of interests between them and the USSR settled after British secured Soviet assent to this in the so-called percentages agreement between Winston Churchill and Joseph Stalin in October 1944. EAM on its part considered itself the only true resistance group. Its leadership was intensely distrustful of British policies for Greece, and viewed Zirva's contacts with London and the Greek government with suspicion. At the same time, EAM found itself under attack by the Germans and their collaborators. Dominated by the old political class, and looking already to the oncoming post-liberation era, the new Ioannis Rallis government had established the notorious security battalions, with the blessing of the German authorities, in order to fight exclusively against ELAS. Other anti-communist resistance groups, such as the Royalist Organization, X, were also reinforced, receiving arms and funding by the British. A virtual civil war was now being waged under the eyes of the Germans. In October 1943, ELAS attacked EADS in Epirus, where the latter organization was the dominant resistance group, by transferring units from the neighboring regions. 
This conflict continued until February 1944, when the British mission in Greece succeeded in negotiating a ceasefire the Plaka Agreement, which in the event proved to be only temporary. The attack led to an unofficial truce between Eads and the German forces in Epirus under General Hubert Lanz. But the fight continued amongst ELAS and the other minor resistance groups like X, as well as against the security battalions, even in the streets of Athens, until the German withdrawal in October 1944. In March, EAM established its own rival government in Free Greece, the Political Committee of National Liberation, clearly staking its claim to a dominant role in post-war Greece. Consequently, on Easter Monday 17 April 1944, ELAS forces attacked and destroyed the EKKA's 542nds Regiment, capturing and executing many of its men, including its leader Colonel Dimitrios Saros. The event caused a major shock in the Greek political scene, since Saros was a well-known Republican, Patriot and anti-Royalist. For EAM ELAS, this act was fatal, as it strengthened suspicion of its intentions for the post-occupation period, and drove many liberals and moderates, especially in the cities, against it, cementing the emerging rift in Greek society between pro- and anti-EAM segments. Topic resistance in the islands and Crete The resistance in Crete was centered in the mountainous interior, and despite the strong presence of German troops, developed significant activity. Notable figures of the Cretan resistance include Patrick Lee Fermor, Petrako Georgis and George Sikondakis. Resistance operations included airfield sabotages, the abduction of General Heinrich Kripa by Patrick Lee Fermor and Bill Stanley Moss, the Battle of Trahili, and the sabotage of Damasta. On Euboea, Sarah Fortis led a small, all-female company of partisans against the German occupational forces. Topic resistance in the cities Resistance in the cities was organized quickly, but of necessity groups were small and fragmented. The cities, and the working-class suburbs of Athens in particular, witnessed appalling suffering in the winter of 1941-42, when food confiscations and disrupted communications caused widespread famine and perhaps hundreds of thousands of deaths. This caused fertile ground for recruitment, but lack of equipment, funds and organization limited the spread of the resistance. The main roles of resistance operatives were intelligence and sabotage, mostly in cooperation with British intelligence. One of the earliest jobs of the urban resistance was helping stranded Commonwealth soldiers escape. The resistance groups stayed in touch with British handlers through wireless sets, met and helped British spies and saboteurs that parachuted in, provided intelligence, conducted propaganda efforts, and ran escape networks for Allied operatives and Greek young men wishing to join the Hellenic forces in exile. Wireless equipment, money, weapons and other support was mainly supplied by British intelligence, but it was never enough. Fragmentation of groups, the need for secrecy, and emerging conflicts between right and left, monarchists and republicans, did not help. Urban resistance work was very dangerous, operatives were always in danger of arrest and summary execution, and suffered heavy casualties. Captured fighters were routinely tortured by the Abwehr and the Gestapo, and confessions used to roll up networks. The job of wireless operators was perhaps the most dangerous, since the Germans used direction finding equipment to pinpoint the location of transmitters. Operators were often shot on the spot, and those were the lucky ones, since immediate execution prevented torture. Topic urban protest One of the most important forms of resistance were the mass protest movements. The first such event occurred during the national anniversary of 25 March 1942, when students attempted to lay a wreath at the Monument of the Unknown Soldier. This resulted in clashes with mounted carabinieri, and marked the awakening of the spirit of resistance amongst the wider urban population. Soon after, from 12 to 14 April, the TTT telecommunications and postal workers began a strike in Athens, which spread throughout the country. Initially, the strikers' demands were financial, but it quickly assumed a political aspect, as the strike was encouraged by EAM's labor union organization, EEAM. Finally, the strike ended on April 21, with the full capitulation of the collaborationist government to the strikers' demands, including the immediate release of arrested strike leaders. In early 1943, rumors spread of a planned mobilization of the labor force by the occupation authorities, with the intent of sending them to work in Germany. The first reactions began amongst students on 7 February, but soon grew in scope and volume. Throughout February, successive strikes and demonstrations paralyzed Athens, culminating in a massive rally on the 24th. 
The tense climate was amply displayed at the funeral of Greece's national poet, Costas Palamas, on 28 February, which turned into an anti-Axis demonstration. Topic risks involved resisting the Axis occupation was fraught with risks. Foremost among these for the partisans was death in combat as the German military forces were far superior. However, the guerrilla fighters also had to face starvation, brutal environmental conditions in the mountains of Greece, while poorly clothed and shod. The resistance also involved risks for ordinary Greeks. Attacks often incited reprisal killings of civilians by the German occupying forces. Villages were burned and its inhabitants massacred. The Germans also resorted to hostage taking. There were also accusations that many of ELAS attacks against German soldiers didn't happen for resistance reasons but aiming the destruction of specific villages and the recruitment of their men. Quotas were even introduced determining the number of civilians or hostages to be killed in response to the death or wounding of German soldiers. Topic table of main resistance groups Topic Notable resistance members Topic See also Cretan resistance June 1942 Crete airfield raids French resistance Polish resistance movement in World War II Partisans Yugoslavia Topic References Topic Sources Arkapale, Simiamata, A Greek Notebook 1944-45, London 1946 Oud, Dominique 1973. The Capitanios, Partisans and Civil War in Greece, 1943–1949. Translated by John Howe. New York and London, Monthly Review Press. ISBN 978-0-85345-275-1. Clogg, Richard A Short History of Modern Greece, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 978-0-521-33804-2 NGL Hammond, Venture into Greece, with the Guerrillas, 1943–44, London, 1983. Like Woodhouse, he was a member of the British Military Mission Hammond, NGL, 1991. The Allied Military Mission in Northwest Macedonia, 1943–44. Balkan Studies, Biannual Publication of the Institute for Balkan Studies, 32 1, 107-144. ISSN 2241-1674. Howarth, Patrick Undercover, The Men and Women of the Special Operations Executive, Routledge, ISBN 978-0-7100-0573-1 Drez, Ronald J. 2009, Heroes Fight Like Greeks, The Greek Resistance Against the Axis Powers in World War II, Ghost Road Press, ISBN 978-0-9816525-9-7 Mark Mazower 2001. Inside Hitler's Greece, The Experience of Occupation, 1941-44. United States, Yale University Press. ISBN 978-0-300-08923-3. Papastratus, Procopus British Policy Towards Greece During the Second World War, 1941-1944, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 978-0-521-24342-1 Robert E., Jr. Behind the Lines in Greece, The Story of OSS Operational Group 2. Bloomington, Indiana, AuthorHouse. ISBN 9781449067381. Retrieved the 11th of April 2013. Schrader, Charles R. 1999. The Withered Vine, Logistics and the Communist Insurgency in Greece, 1945-1949. Greenwood Publishing Group. ISBN 978-0-275-96544-0. Woodhouse, Christopher Montague 2002, The Struggle for Greece, 1941-1949, C. Hearst & Co. Publishers, ISBN 978-1-85065-487-2 Reginald Leeper, When Greek Meets Greek, On the War in Greece, 1943-1945 United States Army Center of Military History, German Anti-Guerrilla Operations in the Balkans 1941-1944 Washington, D.C., United States Army. Hondros, John L. 1983, Occupation and Resistance, The Greek Agony, New York, Pella Publishing Topic External links Martyr Cities and Villages of Greece Network 1940-1945 in Greek official site of the documentary film The Eleventh Day which contains an extensive interview with Sir Patrick Lee Fermor, and documents the Battle of Trahili, filmed in 2003.